September 8th, and welcome to the show. I'm Madeline Foster. And I'm Liam Dwyer. Madeline, I am so glad it's Friday. Me too. Oh my gosh, it's felt like a really long week because it's midterm season. It's felt like two weeks, maybe three weeks, but I'm glad it's finally over. I got my midterms back. I have, I'm still at the university. I haven't failed out. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm in the same boat, and it sounds like we could both use a nice break. But before we make any plans, we definitely have to consult our meteorologist, Will Smith. Will, how's it looking this morning? Well, so today, as you know, it started off really cold, and they don't call me Chilly Willy for nothing. So this morning, we got winds coming in from the north, really kind of frozen temperatures from the cooled pool of air that's been sitting over us. But we can expect it to warm up to about 38 or so this afternoon. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the daily numbers and talk to them in a little bit more detail. All right, so high today is going to be around 38, low tonight dipping back down to around 28 with winds coming from the north for most of the day, but toward late afternoon, they're going to fizzle out and then pick up to the south this evening. Later on, the weekend forecast will take a, a greater look at the different weather phenomena that we're going to see this weekend. Back to you guys. Okay, I'm a little concerned because Will said a high of 38, and I'm just like yeah. not ready for that. Maybe that might have been a typo. Maybe it's like a low of 38 and a high of like, like 83. 75. Like just yeah. switch it around. I'm all about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take a, a peek at what's coming up on today's show. A worldwide event is happening in our backyards. We'll speak to international photojournalist Stretch Ledford about the Pumpkin Launching Championship, Pumpkin Chunkin. And Tora and Harmony unite in the Illinois student production of Stephen King's Carrie, the musical. And we'll hear the story of a local puppy's triumphant rescue. <laughs> Good morning, <laughs> Illini! Okay, I have to say I'm particularly excited about today's show because we're covering so many different things with music and art and there's like stuff about a puppy. Oh my god. What? I can't wait to find out more about that puppy. I know, I'm so excited. I'm so excited about all of it. I'm so excited to hear more about what the heck we're doing with all those pumpkins. I, Seems a I little mean. crazy, <laughs> but let's take a look at this week's highlights with another edition of On Campus. This week's construction started out on north, uh, northeast intersection of Daniel Street and 6th Street. Demolition of the former Expresso Real, C.O. Daniels, Subway, and CAMS are underway. A mass mail was sent out notifying students that the construction has officially begun. The location is being prepared for a new apartment and retail complex coming in 2021. Construction workers have made sure the area is safe for pedestrians by putting up Jersey barrier protection. Despite uh, barriers, the bookstore still remains accessible. Oh my gosh, I did not know since I was, you know, gone last semester sure, and yeah. then I came back and I feel like our whole campus was like ripped in half. It really feels like everything is just going crazy. And now like, even, sure, the bookstore, you can still access it. But like when I was driving, I couldn't get through well, and there's so much. To you know, you can get back on Daniel Street now, right? I, I do. I'm so glad about that. That's a big win. I mean, those of us who use the bus system yeah. are still totally like rerouted right now, mm -hmm. which is which oh, is a lot yeah. to handle, but I think that it should all be worth it whenever it gets all figured out, don't oh, you think? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. In other developments, new changes are coming to the uh, University of Illinois Police Department. UIPD is introducing new, more comfortable interviewing rooms for investigations. That's right, so the interview room is part of a remodeled process of the public safety building. So instead of hard chairs and plain walls, the room features soft couches, warm lighting, and homey decor. The police plan to use this room to speak to victims of crimes, especially victims of sexual assault, domestic violence, and other emotionally taxing subjects. So, I mean, we have to ask the question, but hopefully this makes it a little easier to answer and a little more comfortable, and they can get more comfortable with the person that's actually doing the interview. 
I think it's really awesome to see just kind of how different people in our community are really making an effort to make everything that they're doing more inclusive and you know having those supports in place with our with our police station is going to make a lot of people a lot more comfortable coming forward yeah I definitely think it's the little things the small things that really make a difference like just more I comfortable interviewing rooms I, I would never even think of that and now no. now that we have them I, I feel so much better yeah well I think that we could definitely use some more comfortable bleachers in some of our sports arenas especially since we are taking a new look at Illini sports but the fighting Illini women's basketball team it's it's worth it because they just had their 1,000th win on Saturday the team had a volleyball team the team had a three to zero sweep over Michigan State the win came with help from Diana Brown who had 41 assists this gave the Illini their second highest attack clip of the season yeah, so the volleyball team will be traveling to Ann Arbor Saturday for their game against Michigan and will even play over Thanksgiving break. That's a lot of playing. Can you imagine the dedication that it takes to have to play over a holiday as well? I, I don't have it. I <laughs> certainly know that. <laughs> you don't have it? Okay, if you were going to be playing a sport on campus, which sport would you be drafted for? Like, uh, would you be able to keep up with the women's volleyball team? Uh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm not that athletic. I would be playing chess because the, the chess? Olympics, yes, the Olympics de designates that as a sport. Would you? Really? Absolutely. Yes. Serious? Chess is considered? Chess is considered okay, a sport this is a by the world. Olympics. I finally have a sport that I might be able to compete in. <laughs> you don't have to be athletic to do it. And that's, I mean, you Not have to, at all. That's amazing. Yeah, of course. Well, maybe we'll have to start out a chess club, get some international stuff going on here, get a competition. It's, that would be it. really exciting. But there are already a lot of really exciting things happening on campus. And we can't forget that it is officially college basketball season. Oh, boy. <laughs> Mariah Guzman talks about a few Illinois men's basketball players in this week's Illini Sports Night Quick Hit. Mariah Guzman here with an Illini Sports Night Quick Hit, breaking down some of Illinois' key basketball players. Io DeSumo quickly became a team leader last season and ranks 11th on CBS's Top 100 Players in College Basketball this season. It's no doubt that Desumu will end his career going down as one of the best Illini of the decade. Desumu knows how to get to the basket, and head coach Brent Underwood did mention that Desumu put on 20 pounds for the upcoming season. Desumu needs to get to the line more than three times per game. If he does this, he'll have the potential for a scoring average of close to 20 points per game. Georgie Bashanish Billy is number 99 on CBS's top college basketball players list. The key for him this year will be to cut down on mistakes in general, specifically zoning in on those fouls. Last season, in the 33 games that he played, he fouled out 10 times and had four or more fouls in 21 games. His shot numbers could also improve this season. But his offensive game is what Illinois fans and Brad Underwood trust him for. Another player to look out for is Trent Frazier. Last season, he was at the top of most opposing team scouting reports. Frazier is a great shot and averaged 13.7 points per game last year and shot 40.6% from behind the three-point line. He's a great on-ball defender, but could use more consistency in his game. That's all for now. Make sure you check out our new show, Illini Sports Night, starting in spring 2020. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. I'm Mariah Guzman, getting you up to date on everything Illinois sports. Are you excited for basketball season? How'd that last game make you feel? Uh, I don't know. I didn't watch it. What? I know. Wait, no, what? I don't watch basketball. I've never been to a basketball game. I've never played basketball. I, I just don't. You've never been to a ba like, wh what? I, why have you never been to a basketball game? It's like one of the staple big time experiences to go to a game. There are better sports about? out there. I could just go to football. Okay, so you have gone to games though. Okay, so you're not like too crazy. Not, no, I'm not crazy. Well, no. okay, okay. All right, but, you know, it is fall season. With uh, fall in full swing, there are plenty of class activities to do instead of ba uh, basketball, <laughs> like picking pumpkins, carving pumpkins, pumpkin pie. I mean, there's okay. so much. But, hear me out. What about launching pumpkins? Launching pumpkins? No, I'm serious. In fact, the pumpkin chunk in, in the World Championship of Homemade Pumpkin Launching took place last week just north of Champaign, and our very own Patrick Catazone was able to check it out, along with photojournalist and professor Stretch Ledford. So I'm here with Professor Stretch. We, we call you Stretch, Charles Ledford. Uh, pumpkin chunking is an interesting sport. I know I covered it with you. What, for, for the people who don't know, what is pumpkin chunking? Pumpkin chunking is a, they claim it's a sport. It could be, I guess it would qualify as a sport, but mm -hmm. the idea is to see how far anyone can throw a pumpkin, can launch a pumpkin. 
So, uh, and they use all sorts of, it started out with people throwing them over, you know, uh, just tossing them, and it evolved into air cannons and trebuchets and catapults and centrifuges and all sorts of nutty stuff. And they go, uh, the, the current world record, the sanctioned world record, is almost a mile. Yeah. How did you kind of find out about the event? Oh, goodness. Well, as a journalist, I'm plugged into the heartbeat of this community, mm -hmm. of course, and I have sources. And I found out over the summer that Rantoul had uh, been decided upon as the uh, site for the, this year's Pumpkin Chunkin' mm -hmm. uh, at Chanute, former Chanute Air Force Base. Uh, reached out to the uh, president of the organization, Frank Payton, and said, hey, this would be a great project for my students to cover. Mm -hmm. It's got agriculture. It's got economics, it's got engineering with all the machines, and it's got the weird factor, mm -hmm. which uh, contributes a great deal to Pumpkin Chunkin'. Absolutely. It was really interesting. I personally, I loved seeing that. But what kind of role did the students play? Like, what were the projects that, that they did? So the students were documenting the thing. It was, in a way, it was event coverage, mm -hmm. but uh, it's, it's event coverage that doesn't depend only on being at the event. They had to attend the event and shoot at the event. They, each of my 30 students did a video bio mm -hmm. on uh, different pumpkin chunkers. But leading up to that, they created audio stories. They uh, created stories for print. They uh, created other video stories. Mm -hmm. So that it was covering the event as a phenomenon rather than simply covering it on site and, and reporting from, from the event itself. Awesome. So what was your favorite favorite thing that happened over the weekend at Pumpkin Chunkin? Uh, the favorite thing that happened at Pumpkin Chunkin? Well, it was, I was glad it was over. You know, yeah. there's, there's an old saying uh, at the National Geographic that when someone would get an assignment, they would, you know, I was really glad when I got the assignment. I was glad when I got the assignment, and I was really glad when it was over. So we did a good job. We worked hard. The students worked really hard throughout the semester to uh, cover this. And uh, by the time it was over, I think everyone was, mm. of course, we're still editing, but uh, everyone was ready to be out of the field, uh, out of the wind, out of the cold, and into the edit stations and putting this stuff together. Yeah, absolutely. I had a great time. Uh, so thank you, Stretch, for uh, coming on and giving us a little enlightenment about pumpkin chunking. Absolutely. But any, anyways, with spooky season behind us, many of us are torn between starting up with a holiday season or holding out for Thanksgiving. GMI contributor Sophia Morano and I took a look on the quad to get the Illini input. Check out a sneak peek of our online exclusive, I Have a Question. Is spooky season is officially over. Do you think that it's Thanksgiving season or Christmas season right now? It's most definitely Christmas season. Thanksgiving season or Christmas season? I'm the biggest Christmas lover on earth. I love Christmas. I even listen to Christmas music in June. But it's not Christmas till December 1st. I say it's Thanksgiving season until Thanksgiving's over. I agree with you. That's a good answer. Yeah. I agree. Good, good. Glad we're all on the same page. Well, I'm so glad Stretch came in. I've I had him like so many classes. He's just a, a great professor. I know. I'm adding like on my list so far today of new sports that I did not know were sports. <laughs> I have chess, and now I have pumpkin chunkin. So I'm like thinking of new things that maybe I could be good at. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've heard pumpkin chunkin requires a lot of math, though. So maybe not my okay, my forte. Okay, so um, chess is still on the table. Absolutely. I don't think that I'm going to be launching any pumpkins anytime soon. But right. that's a, that's okay. But I mean, uh, hang on. What? What are you wearing? Your um, shoes. I'm wearing. I don't. I don't want to talk about it. I don't. I don't know what you're. Oh um, my god! <clears throat> in the in the terms of uh, a famous <laughs> meme, um, what are those? Okay. <laughs> well, okay. It was very cold this morning, and I was very tired, mm -hmm. and I just was like, you know what? I want to put on my boots, and I did, and then I was like, I'll throw my heels in my bag before I go, <laughs> and then I didn't. So you know. <laughs> Good morning, Illini. <laughs> <laughs> interesting, interesting. Yeah. It keeps me warm, though. I it, it looks very cozy. Yeah, it, they are very cozy. And to me, the only downside of the fall season is that the weather is getting colder. Not a fan. So let's send it over to our GMI meteorologist, Will Smith, with today's weather. <laughs> you know, like, when you're inside in an HVAC-controlled environment, you can wear whatever you want. People gave me some flack this morning for wearing this, but I have a coat, Mom. Anyway... <laughs> Getting back to the Friday forecast, today we're looking at a high around 38, low around 28, and again, winds from the north. Let's go ahead and look at the numbers in the sky conditions. So it's going to be sunny, clouds coming in tonight when the sun's down, kind of a, 
I believe it's a waxing half moon tonight, so if you like to look at the clouds for the moon, you have your golden opportunity. Again, winds, moderate speed, nothing crazy today. We'll get back at you with a weekend forecast in just a bit to give you more insight on the rest of the weekend. Back to you guys. Thanks, Will. Us humans, though, aren't the only ones that have to deal with this colder weather, despite how much I hate having to deal with <laughs> the colder weather. Last week, a local fisherman came across a dog in a cage. The bigger problem was the what? dog was in a lake. What? That's so sad. And the story has been in the national spotlight all week. But there is good news. Dory the Pitbull is getting better. And DMI contributor Maddie Arrett has the story of Dory's journey. Hello. How are you, people? Who are they? <laughs> Still a little shy and weary. But with a quick shake, Dory is getting the help she needs. She's very calm. She's yeah. very calm. Last weekend, Dory was found by a fisherman in Lake Kaufman. Dr. Carla Rivera treated the eight-month-old pit bull upon her arrival. Well, when she first came in, she obviously was in pain, and um, you could see that she wasn't moving at all. She was just um, basically just laying in the table. She was found with wounds that the University of Illinois Small Animal Clinic staff believe likely occurred before her rescue. Dr. Jenica Horashek describes Dory's mood shift after her treatments began. But she actually did great. She um, sat in the tub, she had nice warm water, we massaged her, and she actually really loved it and enjoyed it. Um, and she's just been kind of coming to life ever since, so she's been doing great. But with plenty of treats and lots of love, Dr. Megan Fick believes this pup is on the road to recovery. So she's acting like a puppy, like she wants, the second you open your cage door, she wants to come out and like sit on your lap and she's looking at your face and her whole body moves when her tail wags, so awesome. she, yeah, she's going to feel like a puppy. <laughs> Dory was cleared from the University of Veterinary Medicine and is in the hands of the Champaign County Animal Control until the investigation with the Champaign Police Department concludes. But one thing is for sure. Someone's going to be very lucky to have her. I'm so glad that she's okay. It breaks my heart. It makes me want to go hug my dog. She is so adorable. It makes me want a dog. Yeah, honestly. we're really thankful for Bet Med and that they could do such a good deed, and that fisherman too. Yeah. But coming up, we will take a look at our artistic side of campus. And we'll take a look at some local high school theater with our UI7 news correspondent, Erica Finke. Stay tuned. <laughs> I like the idea of having something to do over break and I can focus all my time into one subject. A great part about online courses is that you can do your coursework at your own pace. Winter term allowed me to complete one of my gen eds so I could graduate on time. I love the course, the material, and instructors. session course was a great experience. My professor and TAs were easy to contact and very active in the course. The workload was manageable and didn't overwhelm my time off. I would definitely recommend taking a winter course at Illinois. A world-class education, wherever you are. Okay, Liam, I know I kind of mentioned earlier that we were, mm -hmm. we're both on the struggle bus with this one, but Absolutely. how are you handling midterm season? Poorly. Poorly? <laughs> what are you going to do? Are you managing your stress at all in any way? Uh, I, I, st I hang out with friends. Okay. I read a nice book. I drink some tea. That's how I handle stress. Okay. But uh, I think there are other so. ways people handle stress. Yes, a great way to handle stress is through a creative outlet, and we certainly have plenty of artistic students on this campus. GMI's pl uh, Paige Blanzi gave us an inside look at an upcoming event showcasing the artwork of our most creative Illini. Let's check it out. 
Good morning, Illini. I'm Paige Blanzy here with Caroline Whirl from 8 to Create as they get ready for their undergraduate art gallery. Thank you so much for talking to us, Caroline. Thank you. And then can you tell us a little bit about what people can expect when they come to your art gallery? Yeah, so 8 to Create is having our undergraduate art gallery this Saturday at the Red Herring. And so this year we have about 22 undergraduate artists and their art will be displayed all around the restaurant and people will come in and they can vote on their favorite artists and the winner will be chosen to participate in our live art show in the spring. Right, mm -hmm. and then how do you guys choose what art pieces go into the show? Yeah, so the committee in Eight to Create votes on the artists that will go into the show and we take everything into consideration from the size of the piece to the overall composition and the talent and everything. So we have a limited space this year at the Red Herring, so it was kind of tough to narrow down the choices, but we definitely have a really good selection this year. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this is your second annual art show, so how did you mm -hmm. guys even get this started two years ago? Yeah, so Eight to Create, um, our live art show in the spring has been going on for about five years now, but the undergraduate show we just started last year, um, and so last year we collaborated with another RSO on campus to host it, and so that was really helpful, and this year we're kind of doing it on our own. So um, it's definitely a really cool experience, and we're definitely getting a lot more undergrads involved in Eight to Create, which is what we want to do for U of I and the community. So so how do you guys find these students that want to participate in the art gallery? So we reach out to a lot of art students, painting, graphic design students. Um, we also advertise a lot on social media and just putting posters around buildings. So it definitely spreads the word for our show, yeah. Make sure to come out tomorrow at the Red Herring at 4 p.m. to check out the Undergraduate Art Gallery and Good Morning Illini. Who knew we had so many talented students all across the board? Truly. I know. I, I, it makes me want to be good at art. Are you not good at art? I'm not good at art. How like, good of a stick person can you draw, though? Pretty good. That's I am a connoisseur of stick people. That's all that matters. But lucky for you, Eight to Create is not the only way on campus that students can show their artistic side. In this edition of Who Am I, we meet a U of I sophomore who combines her loves of singing and crocheting. Wow. My name is Akwia Darkula. I'm 19 years old. I'm a sophomore at, un at the University of Illinois and I'm majoring in jazz vocal performance. Started from my fifth and sixth grade elementary school choir actually and then I had just been singing since then. I learned the basics of crocheting when I was really little from my aunt and then like every couple of years or so I would like crochet a little bit and then like just stop and then forget that I even knew how to crochet until I like would find my yarn on my hook again and I would just like start randomly. And I didn't start making clothes until my sophomore year of high school. And then I didn't start adding pictures onto my clothes until this past April. Honestly, I was not planning on getting where I was this fast. Like, I'm a musician first, and crochet was just like a hobby that I had. Um, and I didn't expect to go viral like I did as many times as I did. Um, my first shirt that went viral was my salon shirt from the When I Get Home album. Um, but basically what had happened was I was going into my Italian class and my Italian class is one to 150 and I posted it right before, like at one o'clock on a dot and then I just went to class. Didn't check my notifications at all until class was out. And then I got out of class. I had like around 600 followers at the time and it was at 2000 likes. And I was like, something is going on here. And then um, a bunch of my friends had texted me like, wow, like, girl, you need to check your notifications. And so I did. And then I found out that Solange retweeted it and she saved the pictures and posted them on her Instagram story. Um, and music in general has been my first love. And I was inspired to do this because of the music I was listening to. And I was inspired to sing for a large portion of the reason I was inspired to sing was because of the music I was listening to. I'm always going to have the passion of being a singer, but crocheting is something that I do for fun, and if I make a career out of it, I'm okay with that, but my main career goal is to be a singer. What do you think? Well, I I've done musicals before. Really? I, what? So I have Wait, some. What? Yes, I've done many musicals in my life, but that, I, that's wait, an entire level. I didn't know level. this. What did you do? What is like, what's your starring role? What's your? Uh, I was, I, <laughs> I've done so many. We'll talk about it later. Okay, but well, you know what? Uh, there's uh, something that you need to show me at, sure. at the Espresso Open Mic Night. Oh my God. So one of our community's beautiful voices 
you like you yes. can be heard at the Espresso Royale on the corner of Goodwin and Oregon in Urbana. So people of all ages are welcome to perform during their Espresso Yourself Cafe open mic nights. The event is free and open to all styles of music and spoken word. A keyboard and a guitar are open to use along with two microphones and an aux cord. A sign-up sheet is posted 15 minutes before the event begins for performers to claim their spots. Don't worry if you miss it, though. Espresso Yourself Cafe open mic nights are held ev the first Thursday of every month. So don't worry, you're not out of luck. I expect to see you there. I will be there. Your musical th with your musical theater prowess. I am a master at musical theater. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited to see your talent, but it is really cool just to see how much talent Illinois students have. It is, and music is in the air all over town. Our UI7 news correspondent, Erica Finke, went across town to witness the talent of a local high school. Erica? Thanks, guys. Yeah, a lot of people develop their appreciation for the arts at an early age. For me, I was a huge choir and theater nerd. Oh my gosh, I peaked in high school. Um, so this week, I got to travel back to high school when I visited Champaign Central High School's production of The Addams Family. Let's check it out. Lights, camera, action. A lot goes into opening a musical. Lots of practice, rehearsal, and learning. When students stop just doing it the way that I said it, and start kind of creating their own character and they actually react to things that are happening. But I will laugh when all of those unexpected things happen and, and they just start to be the character instead of be the version of the character that I have directed. A strategy leading freshman Wade Schacht has taken advantage of being double cast as the role of Gomez Adams in the Adams Family Musical. I can uh, learn stuff from him and, uh, and so I can watch him when I'm on stage and I just see some stuff and I'm like, I'm doing that next time I'm up there. And for senior Madeline Henson, it's the versatility to play different roles. Usually I always played like the dorky, little quirky, best friend, sidekick type of person and now I feel like I've learned how to like be a leading lady. This production has been a learning opportunity for both Madeline and Wade. If the whole cast works together, they could have the performance opportunity of a lifetime. This year, I knew that we, I wanted to be evaluated so that the kids could get that experience. Um, we bypassed state a couple years ago and went to nationals, but this particular group, all of these four years of students have not been able to go and travel with the show. They have a chance to bring their show to Illinois High School Theater Fest. I've been to Theater Fest twice already, and I've always been like, I want to be up there performing for all these theater kids. Like, that is just, that would be a dream. A dream that the cast feels pretty confident about. I believe we've got a very good show coming along right now. So I'm just really excited to, you know, show them what we've got and uh, put it all out there. And it's, uh, it's not enough, it's not enough, but I'm really, I really think it will be. And no matter what happens, they'll have the memories and lessons they've learned with the Adams family. It is honestly just so incredible how talented, talented all of them are, so it's going to be exciting where the show takes them. Adam's Family opened last night and will run through Sunday, but that's not the only show happening this weekend. I'll send it back to your anchors to hear more. Champagne Central is not the only place putting on a great show tonight. Uh, you only have to go as far as the quad for the student theater experience. Illini Student Musicals is putting on a stage production of Stephen King's classic horror story, Carrie. Well, before we end our show, let's take one final look at the weather and check in with our meteorologist, Will Smith. <laughs> hey, what's going on? So this weekend, nothing too crazy. We got a cold pool of cold air sitting off to the north. Today, we're looking at about a high of 37, low of 28. Clouds moving in tonight, early tomorrow morning. Gonna, temperature's going to rise up to 48 tomorrow afternoon, down to 37. Warm on Sunday as well. Possible cold weather Monday morning. That's about it. Well, that's our show for the week. Be sure to check us out on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. 
And be sure to send us more ideas at goodmorningillini at illinois.edu. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next Friday morning at 10 a.m.